Have you ever thought about doing psychedelic drugs? Well, don't. Check out Wes Wilson's posters instead. Wes Wilson was originally born as Robert Wesley Wilson. He is generally known as the father of the 60s rock concert poster. He was born on July 15, 1937, making him currently 80 years old. He was born in Sacramento, California, where he grew up mostly. While growing up, Wes didn't have the desire to be an artist. He was more into nature, studying forestry, and other things like that. He dropped out of San Francisco State in 1963, where his major was actually philosophy. His first poster was a self-published one under the name of Are We Next? It has a swastika with the American flag design. He made it in a form of protest to the increasing United States involvement in the Vietnam War. To this day, Wes is still including lots of his political beliefs in his pieces of artwork. Albert Herfman was a researcher with the Swiss chemical company known as Sandoz. Sandoz first developed the Lysergic Acid Dithromatic, also known as LSD, in 1938. But it didn't go big in the States until the early 1960s. This is what began the psychedelic period. Some of the bigger characteristics of Wes Wilson's psychedelic art is surrealistic subjects, bright and high contrasting colors, extremely detailed, morphing objects, spirals, circles, diffractioning patterns, repeat designs, and warp text. Wes Wilson got his big start when he started working with Bob Carr, the owner of Contact Printing. Together they helped to release Wilson's designs to the mass. Some of his biggest ones at the start of his career were the Mary Prankster Acid Test, Avalon Ballroom Posters, Fillmore Auditorium Posters, and posters for the first Trips Festival. Wilson worked with a lot of people, but after a while he began to focus more with Bill Graham and Fillmore, because they allowed him more of an artist freedom than being in a theme. Wilson got his inspirations from the Art Nouveau movement, but was also influenced by artists like Al Svenik Mucho, Van Gogh, Gusta Kilmont, and Egon Sedil. But after seeing a 1903 poster done by Alfred Roller that had the alphabet and lettering style quite close to what he was trying to do, he began to decide this was what he was going into. This poster helped influence him to make his first true psychedelic piece of artwork called BG-18. BG-18 was created for a show with the Association at Fillmore Auditorium. Set in the background of a green is the swirling flames of red letters. Wilson's poster, The Sound, went big when he brought together two of his famous concepts, beautiful women and filling the space with words and designs. In 1968, Wilson was awarded an award from the National Endorsement from the Arts for being a key artist in the psychedelic poster scene. Not to mention the award came with a $5,000 bonus. Wilson has also published his book called The Art of Rock in 1989. This book led to him getting invited to the Springfield Art Museum. The museum had its own section called Looking Back, Rock Posters in 1960s by Wes Wilson. This started the spark in him that, to create the Off the Wall section of his artwork. Off the Wall was a quarterly magazine that held posters of rock and roll events, poetry, and other items inside. This magazine was published nine times. Wilson is still creating paintings and posters as he sits back with his family of his wife of 40 years, six kids, and ten grandchildren. For now. Wilson Wilson has an impact on the art industry and society that didn't stop after the mid-70s. To this day, his designs and ideas are still being used. Nowadays, people see them as more of a hippie style, but that's not true. Many companies still use his psychedelic artwork, just with more of a readability. For example, Fanta commercials use the similar designs. 
Things like Jimi Hendrix Apparel, Peace Tea, and Adidas all use similar designs to psychedelic artwork, just increasing the readability.